Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another standard game the video. Today we're taking a look at a Naya Colored Aggro Legends deck featuring a couple new cards from Phyrexial Will Be One. The main inclusion is the addition of the new Fast Lanes, which enable this three color aggro deck to exist. So, four copies of Razor Verge Thicket and four copies of Copper Line Gorge allows us to get away without having to play Jetmere's Garden, which will always come into play tapped and instead curve out a lot better. And then another advantage of being a legendary deck is that Plaza of Heroes lets us cast our spells, as well as being a late game mana sink to protect one of our legendaries, giving it hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. So the mana base is actually one of the main additions of Phyrexia All Will Be One. And then taking a look at our spells, at one mana we also get to play with the new Evolving Adaptive. Despite not being a legendary, it still plays quite nicely in this deck, as it will keep picking up additional oil counters over time, getting plus one plus one for each one of them, so perfect one drop. And then hopeful initiate is our author one drop that can also grow as we train as we attack with larger creatures and Skrelf, a nice one mana legendary that can protect our author legends by giving them hexproof from a color until end of turn can also prevent opposing creatures from a certain color from blocking our creature that we target with Skrelf, so it can also be useful in a late game situation where the board is stalled then at two mana of course full set of thalia to punish non-creature spells and we don't have any non-creature spells ourselves so it's going to be a one-sided effect We've got three copies of the Bodyguard, as well as three copies of Melira, which are both two mana, three, three legends that can be sacrificed to protect other creatures in play. And then we also have one Felden, a 2-2 with haste, a perfect follow-up to a turn one initiate, as we can train it right away and get in for four damage. And then Felden cannot block, and when it's dealt damage, exile that many cards from the top of our library, choose one of them, and until the end of our next turn we may play that card. And then Baird also has a bit of synergy in this deck, a 2-2 saying at the beginning of our end step, if we control a creature with power greater than its base power, create a 1-1 white soldier creature token. And we've got a bunch of different creatures to enable Baird in this deck, Initiate can train to get a plus one counter, we've got the Adaptive, a 0-0 as base power, which will also enable Baird by itself. And then at 4 mana there's both Partners and Jetmere to pump up our team, so all those will enable Baird for us. At 3 mana we've got 3 copies of Brutal Cathar as our main removal in the deck. And then we've got a few token enablers, including Adlin, which is probably the most powerful win condition in this deck once it gets going, making 1-1 human tokens and power equal to the number of creatures we control. And 3 copies of Squee, a 2-2 with haste that can attack right away, making 1-1 goblin tokens that are also tapped and attacking. Can also maybe get Squee back from the graveyard in the grindier matchups. And then finally a 1-of copy of Megloss, a 4-4, enters with 5 oil counters on it. And then we can remove a number of oil counters to either give it Vigilance and Menace until end of turn, give it plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn, or destroy an artifact or enchantment, which is probably the most powerful mode. And as a 4-4 creature, perfect for growing Adaptive up to 4 power. Adaptive also very good with Adlin, which often enters with a lot of power to immediately grow our Adaptive. And then topping off our curve, two copies of the partners to put plus one counters on our creatures and give them haste until end of turn. And finally two copies of Jetmere, which plays quite nicely with our go white theme from Adlin and Squee, making a bunch of tokens. As creatures we control get plus one plus one and have vigilance as long as we control three or more creatures. They get an additional plus one plus one trample if we have six or more. And finally if we have nine or more creatures, they get an additional plus one plus one and double strike. Unlikely to get to that point, but at least getting plus one plus one and vigilance also helps play around cards like the Wandering Emperor, which can otherwise be quite effective against us. And then besides all the dual lands and plaza, we also get to play with the channel lands, which get a discount from controlling legendary creatures. So these give us additional interaction, which is why I'm playing two copies of Igancho and two copies of Crucible, another way of making tokens to enable Jetmir or as a way to close out the game. And then Boseju deals with artifacts or enchantments, Igancho deals four to attackers or blockers, so that's our author removal besides a Brutal Cathar. And then a couple pain lands as well to round out the mana base. Sometimes you will still have draws where you have adaptive or initiate in your opener, and then you don't have the corresponding colors since you maybe have a plaza instead, which doesn't help cast them. So there can still be a little bit of awkwardness there with the mana, but I think it's been working out for the most part. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand seems fine. Thalia into maybe an Adeline on three. Facing blue-eyed soldiers, so Brutal Cathar, one of our better cards. Thalia not so much, since there's very few non-creature spells going around. Partners could also be useful. 
and then hopefully we don't see too many Sky Strike officers on the other side. Second Brutal Cathar I'll take. And then play Rune Thalia to block officer. Okay, veteran pumps a team, still doesn't let officer attack. Could take the trade here, which isn't a bad thing. Even though Thalia was a good blocker for officer. And then now play Adlin. Could see an opposing Brutal Cathar exile it. If not, we can maybe start attacking next turn. Especially with the partners pumping it up. Then it's a 3-4. And we'll take two. Okay, so we have options. Partners would get Adeline up to enough power to attack by Asdenic. Of course, they could still eat a 1-1 token and gain three. But uh, we would get a hidden with Adeline and put counters on it. And then next turn we could see Brutal Cathar exile any one of our two creatures. Could also play a Skrelv and our own Brutal Cathar. And then probably go after Valiant Veteran. Close call. I think we go for partners. So get in for 5, minus 3, still 2 damage. But more importantly, get 2 counters on Adeline. Is it time for Brutal Cathar? Or does our opponent deploy a Siege Veteran or Sky Strike Officer? Most likely gonna exile whatever they play. Okay, never mind, it's gonna be a Skrelv. Also, kind of a must answer before we can use our Cathar anywhere else. Opponent could be holding up reinforcements, they could be relying on a second eye Ganjo, even though that's not super likely since they have a legendary creature, so exiling Denik would be a way to kind of play around that. But reinforcements seems most likely, so we should probably just exile Valiant Veteran and play Skrelv. If I give Skrelv haste, I could even give Adlin pro white. If our opponent flashes in two 1 1s, they would have 4, 5, 6 power. So I guess if we just put more counters on Adlin, they wouldn't be able to trade. Although I'm potentially putting too many eggs in one basket. So the haste is only until end of turn, so I wouldn't be able to keep up Skrelv to protect from an opposing Brutal Cathar. Yeah, I guess just putting counters on Adlin is fine. But it's most likely going to get exiled next turn. And for now our opponent could jump with a 1-1, or just take it. So there's the reinforcements end of turn. Next turn they could also play the 3-2 legends to fly the team. It's going to be a siege veteran instead. Alright, so it doesn't seem like they have a brutal Cathar. So Adlin proving to be quite valuable. And now if we use Skrelf with Pro White, Adlin can just smash. Although, opponent can still block the 1-1 token with Denik to gain some life back. So I don't think we can quite kill them here. Alternatively, I can just use Skrelf on the 1-1 token. Which may be a bit excessive, but it's a way to prevent Denik gaining life for free. And then Brutal Cathar just has to go after Skrelf here. The downside of using Skrelv on a 1-1 one -one token is that it's going to be tapped in case your opponent top decks Brutal Cathar, which could be bad. So I'm somewhat hesitant to make that play. And our opponent can of course just jump with a 1-1 one -one on Adlin. So let's just put counters on Felden, which can attack alongside Adlin. Opponent eats the 1-1, one -one, chumps Felden, that will keep them alive. Although it makes more sense to chump Adlin at that point. Okay, Felden goes digging. And Athalia, we can maybe play next turn. So we've got our own Skrelf now to protect Adlin. Although next turn opponent can potentially block with a 1-1 soldier if we give pro white on Adelin. Okay, there's a Brutal Cathar, has to go after a Skrelv. That works, so no real point in activating here, but 
May as well. Then I up to a 4-5. And Baird's not a bad draw either. Alrighty, so... Play Thalia, play Baird. Still have to be careful about a potential Harbin flying the opponent's team. Just want to keep up the pressure here. So where do the counters go? On Felden, perhaps? So it can attack past Denik. These two can attack. At least partners have reached, so they can potentially block a Flying Soldier next turn if uh, Harbin shows up. End of turn, Barret makes another 1-1. One, one. So, yeah, if it weren't for the life-linking Denik, this game would have been over a while ago. There's Harbin, so that's what our opponent was setting up all along. Should still be safe. So yeah, I have to chump with the partners to survive, so may as well chump Denik. And then we should have them on the way back. So it ended up being a very close game. And I Gunja is not bad either. GG's. Plaza can also protect one of our creatures. Damage happens. And that's game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Turn one, have to decide between initiate and adaptive, and it's a close call. I'll go with the adaptive. That way we can already attack for two on turn two. And then now Thalia. And next turn a hasty squee. And then Igancho represents some cheap removal. Okay, Adlin's a good draw. And if her opponent has a cutdown available, they won't be able to take out Adlin in response. So we'll get our 1-1 token. So may see them take out the Adaptive or Thalia. Since it did seem like they had a cutdown in hand last turn. Adaptive grows. Out of cutdown range. So cutdown kills Thalia. Still get in for 4. Alright, it's going to be a March instead. Pitching another card. That makes sense too. Going on getting rid of the Liliana, which is not very effective now that we get a 1 1 token. So we'll see if they can answer Adlin. And then for now, we could double spell using Igancho, or we can keep Igancho in hand. And then we'll have a tapped Gorge left over as well. Yeah, I think double spelling is fine here. So we'll play Squee, play Initiates. To grow Adlin as much as possible, but might be taken out here. Okay, now we can attack first, play initiate second main for what it's worth. And hope we can keep up the pressure. Something like a shield root could be problematic. Trespasser. We can still attack into for the most part. And a backup Thalia. Okay, play that. And then smash. Opponent can block Squee and then try and exile it next turn, but they'll be taking a lot of damage in the meantime. And I should maybe hang on to Gorge in case we find another Igancho and need to discard to the Trespasser. Opponent cannot even cast an Invoke Despair, not that we would really mind. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Initiate into Thalia to start out. And then we've got a couple more legends we can play. Opponent on Esper, so Thalia should be effective. 
and lesser opponents on the Esper Legends build with mostly creatures. Okay, Mirax points towards a more controlling strategy. So, yeah, I think we still run out Thalia instead of Meliora first to protect against uh, removal on Thalia. Could have attacked for one first. Syncopates hits Thalia, that's too bad. Okay, so we're on the Melira plan now. Does help against potential poison creatures hitting us. Scrutiny for one. So they may have some bigger cards in hand that uh, they're building towards. Revelry will uh, make 2 one ones gain for, not bad. But time for partners. Adeline's also tempting. Partners is more mana efficient. And then next turn we could maybe attack with a hasty Adeline. Put counters on Melira since we'll be able to train the initiate here. If there's a board wipe, Melira saves partners. The fact that they didn't double chump means they're not planning to cast a sweeper next turn yet. But if it's a six mana sweeper like Farewell, exiling creatures, then Malira's not gonna help. Alright, March going after partners. Dealing four damage here. So yeah, Malira can save it and then set up Hasty Adlin, I think that's fine. Thalia's great too. Might be better here to potentially delay a farewell. And then maybe put counters on Baird. Attack with four powered Baird, which can train initiates. Keep Thalia untapped. Okay. Hope to dodge some board wipes. Depopulate at least draws. Still not what we wanted to see. Bodyguard would have been the perfect answer. Now probably go Adaptive plus Adeline. Bodyguard grows Adaptive once again. Opponent is still at 19, so don't love my position. Void Rand kills Adlin. And they're looking at the graveyard. For a witness of future to shuffle some cards back. Well, at least the coast is clear for partners to resolve. As much as I want to play bodyguard first. Could I get in while we can? And then we can also leave a plaza to protect our legends. Put on tapping out for scrutiny for four. Okay. So we've got a window to play bodyguard. And then we could channel crucible. Does that give us anywhere close to lethal? So bodyguard up to five power, 12, 14. Yeah, that should be exactly enough. Sweet. Close one here against Esper Control. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. This is sadly not a keep since we cannot cast Initiate or Adaptive with our current mana. This seems better. Get rid of Athalia. Turn to Thalia. Currently don't have a creature to synergize with Baird. Okay, can attack with Squee. And I'm okay with a trade. Key Brutal Cathar to answer scarier creatures like Shieldred. Trespassers unfortunate. Excelling Squee here. 
So I guess we'll just play Miglos and pass. Archfiend, that's a big one. Probably have to exile that with Brule Cathar while Miglos attacks. Edict can get rid of Thalia. And a sleeper. Okay. So we can't actually make white mana with Plaza to channel a Ganjo. So that's not going to be a thing. So instead we'll play Baird probably after attacking with Miglos in case we need to pump. Opponent takes it. And then next turn we'll have white mana with a Ganjo at least. Or we can just run out any shit. I think it's just Baird and Pass. Invoke the Spare Psycho Goblin. So now we can channel Igancho for just a single mana. So we'll just start by attacking. Miglos threatens 6 damage. Okay, so I think we just channel Discarding Gorge, play Initiates. And then we can sack Initiate to another Invoke Despair if needed. Archfiend's fine. And Underdogs, our opponent's got three blockers. But now with Squee, we'll have plenty of attackers. So let's say we play Squee attack all out. Opponent puts Archfiend on Miglos, Underdog on Brulgathar, Sleeper can chump. Opponent still takes four damage. Alright, GG's. Close one here against Mono Black. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems fine. No one drop is the only drawback, but Thalia followed by ways to protect it. Maybe Bodyguard to protect partners as well. And Cathara's removal against creatures. So we've got most bases covered. Turn one planes veteran, so a creature life gain deck. So Thalia is not going to be at its best, so maybe we prefer Bodyguard to apply a bit more pressure. And next turn we could play Hasty Squee. Okay, Bangbuster, we could have delayed with Thalia potentially. Still happy to run out Squee. Opponent takes it. Opponent passes, planning to maybe activate Bankbuster. Oh, give partners a shot. And then counters on the Goblin token to diversify. Opponent draws. There is a reason to put counters on a legendary creature in case we sank Bodyguard. Maybe keep the counters on Squee, but then next turn a Wandering Emperor exiling Squee. Could have been bad. Opponent just takes it all. So they are planning to play more creatures to trigger Veteran, presumably, and then we'll be able to Cathar get rid of them. Okay, red whites. That adds another twist. Archangel of Wrath, just a 3 4 lifelink here. Gains 1 up to 6. They can crew Bankbuster if we try and exile it, but I think that still leaves their opponents in a lot of trouble. 
And our opponent explodes. Yeah, this uh, legendary deck can be relentless when it curves out. Okay, we're on the play. Missing white mana. So, don't think we can keep, unfortunately. This is better. Adaptive into Melira into either Squee or Adlin. So we have to decide which three drop to keep here. And, uh, yeah, they're both great. Adlin maybe a little bit better with Adaptive. Squee applies immediate pressure. I think Adlin has the most upside. Especially with Melira to protect Adlin. Put on black white and a crawling chorus, so poison deck. Well, Malira's pretty good against poison, since we'll only be able to take one poison counter at most each turn. So some random upside here. Not the reason we're playing Malira, but I'm not gonna turn it down in this matchup. Okay, drown an Icker to take it out, but we can at least sacrifice to prevent the proliferate. Not that we had any poison counters to begin with. And jam Adlin, attack, make a token. So hit for four here. There's an argument for playing bodyguard first in case of more removal on Adlin, although it wouldn't help against Drown and Icker since it's decreasing toughness, so indestructible is not very helpful there. Another chorus. And Skrelv's Hive. Okay, so just gonna play Bodyguard and Smash. Still only at one poison, so Hive is not gonna give Life Link anytime soon. And then it's gonna help us out in killing the opponent. And then we'll be able to keep a Plaza in the foreseeable future to protect Adeline as well. Maybe considering trading for the 1 1. Just jumping Adlin for now. Going falls to seven. Okay, let's see if they can figure out a way to stabilize. Charge killing bodyguard deals three damage to it. So we'll sack in response. So they can chump Adlin once again and still take lethal, so I think we're good here. GG's. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems decent. Missing a third land, but... Uh, Otherwise, we should be able to curve out quite nicely. I guess a red aggro deck. So Thalia is going to be quite effective, and we'll have Skrelf to protect her. Now, end of festivities would be unfortunate, so hopefully they don't have that one. Phoenix Chick is fine. And another one. So we'll take two in the air. And then question becomes whether we play Squee, could also play Bodyguard, and then maybe keep up Poseju to blow up a Warfare, although I guess with Thali out they wouldn't be able to play next turn yet, so that's not a concern. Bodyguard would protect Thali up from a potential end of festivities, although if they had one we probably would have seen it last turn. So I think Squee to apply the most pressure makes sense, and then Question remains whether to hang on to Boseju or Crucible. Crucible applies more pressure, Boseju an answer to Warfare, which they're pretty far from casting. I think we hang on to Crucible. And then I'll attack with Thalia, since she may not be around forever. Skrelf could activate to let the token go through the Swift Spear. That would cost me two life, and I think I would prefer to keep Skrelf to protect one of my creatures. Okay. Another Swiss Spear. Take four. We might see a play with fire, take out Skrelf. 
goes after Squee. Okay, protect Squee here. Does mean taking two more. Now we can go for Adaptive plus Brutal Cathar. Exile uh, Swift Spear. Still gonna keep Skrull back. Although we're getting to the point where I won't be able to afford a 2 life to activate it. Now they could play Warfare. But it looks like they have other plans. Okay, so how do we feel about double blocking Swift Spear? Kind of like that. If they try and kill one of my creatures, I can protect with Skrelf, so at most I'll get two prowess triggers up to a 3 4, and we still trade. Play with Fire goes upstairs. That's fine. So they'll get a Swiss Spear back. Alright, it's going to be close, so if I play Bodyguard, we grow Adaptive. We'll have a 3-3 blocker for Swiss Spear. Now we can activate Skrelf without having to pay life. Can't quite present lethal this turn. So, I'm going to keep an extra token back to block a Foundry. Just attack with these. Question is whether Skrelv wants to let uh, Goblin go through. Then we would have Bodyguard and a 1 1 back to block. Right now we're hitting for uh, 7 damage, assuming they block the 1 1. Points at 4, so next turn we should be able to close out the game no matter what, so I don't think we need to use Skrelv. Okay. Let's see if they can kill us here. Burn spell will do it. One card left. Foundry activates. And we're just gonna chump the Foundry since they can pump with the other Foundry. Block Swiss Spear. And our opponent explodes. Very close one here against Monoret. Top deck to burn spell could have made the difference as we level up. Awesome. Alright, so we got to see our Naya Legends in action, and I'm pretty happy with how the deck performed. There can still sometimes be a bit of awkwardness in the mana if we draw too many 1-drops and have Plaza of Heroes as one of our only lands, and then we won't necessarily be able to curve out, but we should have enough sources that come into play untapped early on to curve out nicely, and then we don't have to run the Jetmere's Gardens, which will always come into play tapped, which this deck doesn't really want. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.